Today we welcome Rob Schallenberger, and let me just give you a little bit of background on Rob. Uh, Rob was born and raised right here in Utah. He graduated from Utah State University in 2000 with a degree in marketing. Uh, Rob was an F-16 fighter pilot for 11 years, and that's pretty cool. Anybody else? Um, yeah, didn't think so. Uh, so that's pretty neat. He was also an advance agent for Air Force One and traveled the world in support of that mission. He went on to earn an MBA from Colorado State in 2009. He's the author of the book, How to Su Succeed in High School. He's also the CEO of Becoming Your Best Global Leadership. And on a side note, they just released their book two months ago, which has skyrocketed up to number one on the national bestseller list. He's a top-rated, world-renowned speaker. He and his team have trained Fortune 500 companies and government leaders around the world, most recently in the Philippines and in Rwanda, which was pretty cool. He's passionate about being successful in life, but also at home. He's been married for four years and has 17 children. No, no, my bad. He's been married for 17 years and has four children. That's, that's better. Um, he doesn't want you to take all this stuff too seriously. He wants you to take his presentation rather seriously, though. Just on a side note, I will mention I've had the chance to work with uh, Rob on some leadership materials and so forth. We had a great time working together. Very insightful, very thoughtful gentleman. And I will also mention that the Schallenberger family, both Rob and his father, uh, Steve, have been supportive of our programs here, having endowed a scholarship here at UVU in the business school. So we're grateful for that, very grateful for that. And without further ado then, I give you Rob Schallenberger.
Isn't that an awesome video? I love that video. Who liked that video? I love it. Now what the dean didn't tell you is that technically I'm a UVU alumni. About 23 years ago I took two classes here which qualifies me as an alumni. Now the two classes were scuba diving and private pilot's license ground school. <laughs> but they were two classes so it's great to be here today. Now let me just ask you, this is a little bit informal here. What are some things that you saw in this video that allowed Arthur Borman to go through this amazing transformation? Just shout them out. Dedication. Dedication. Good. What else? Self-confidence. Self Good. He didn't believe when people told him no. Absolutely. Could I suggest that it started with one thing? Desire. Couldn't you imagine him sitting on a couch one day thinking to himself, you know what, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of not being able to do anything and I want something better. And when he had that seed of desire, that's when true transformation started to happen. Now let me ask you a question here. Who is in uh, sales in this room? Raise your hand. Shouldn't all our hands be up? Who's dating? You're definitely in the sales business, right? <laughs> let me ask you a question. What's your name right here? You two. Yeah, what's your name? Josh? Yep. And? Brooke. Brooke. So Brooke, if you came up to Josh and said, hey, do these four things and you'll be the best salesman in the entire world. If you had no desire to do those things, are they helpful? No. But if you had the desire and those four things actually work, then you become almost unstoppable, right? It's the power of combining tools with desire. Now I remember 24 years ago, here in this valley I worked at a water park, who I won't name, but I will say it starts with seven and ends with peaks. <laughs> I was their garbage guy. My job was to walk around and pick up garbage. And I specifically remember one July afternoon, it was scorching hot. I looked over in the wave pool and there were my high school buddies playing in the water. And I saw a hot dog sitting on the ground and I had to pick it up. And I got ketchup and mustard all over my arms. And I thought, you know what, this is not what I want to do the rest of my life. What was happening? The seed of desire. And so I started thinking, well, what is it that I want to do? And that's when my new vision came into play, which was to be a fighter pilot. And so for the next 11 years, as the dean mentioned, I flew F-16s all over the world. Had some amazing experiences. Imagine flying over the Gulf of Mexico at 50,000 feet, 1.4 times the speed of sound, where you can actually see the curvature of the Earth. Or flying at night over the ocean 100 miles offshore. It's just myself and my wingman with our night vision goggles and you can look up and see a star-filled night. It's beautiful, it's peaceful. Now I will say this, in the process I lost two close friends who were killed in action. Klepto and Trojan. It will forever change my life. They were close friends, both killed in tragic accidents. Despite their deaths, I would never trade that 11 years in the Air Force for anything. It transformed who I was. Now, I thought about coming here today. You know, I could share with you my life story, but I thought much more impactful than that would be to share with you four secrets of success, four things that have transformed my life and that I've seen transform thousands of people's lives in the hopes that maybe it might help you as you launch your journey in life here. So that's what I'm going to do. But first of all, let's start with this idea of transformational versus transactional leadership. Now I'm going to come down here a little bit. Let's define transactional. What is transactional to you? What does transactional mean? Okay, just something quick. What else? Define transactional. Exchange. Just an exchange, right? Yeah, just an exchange of information. Define transformational. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> I love that. You change someone as a result of interacting with them. They are better for interacting with you. You leave a situation better than you found it, right? Who in here is in a retail of any kind, works at a retail store? Okay, so here's an example. My son wrestles. He's 13 years old. I walked into a store here in the city to get him a set of headgear. Now, as I walked in, I was the only customer. There sitting on the desk were three employees, all looking at their phones. Without even looking up, one of them looks at me, or excuse me, talks to me and says, 
Hey, if you need anything, let me know. Transactional or transformational? Absolutely transactional versus another store. I walked in and one of their sales reps walks up to me and says, hey, my name is John. Thank you so much for being in our store today. Do you mind if I ask your name? I said, sure, it's Rob. Rob, we're so grateful to have you here. Truly we are. How can I help you? Transactional or transformational? Yeah, absolutely. Do you think I felt better after just 20 seconds of interacting with him? Absolutely. Transformational. And that took 20 seconds to do. What direction do you think the world is going? Transactional or transformational? Transactional. And it's going there quick, right? So our task is, how do we be transformational? In our marriages, in our businesses, and in our personal life. So that's what this is about today. I hope this helps in that effort. And it starts with this idea, which is G-I-G-O. This is a writer downer. Some of you may have heard this, right? Starts with what? Garbage in? Garbage out. Well, let's change that around a little bit. How about this? Greatness in, greatness out. Too often, we think that we can put garbage in and then expect greatness out. And it doesn't work that way, right? Once we put greatness in, then we can expect greatness out. But that's the flow. So how do we put greatness in? Well, as the dean mentioned, we released our book two months ago. Fortunately, it's been a number one national bestseller. In that book, we talk about the 12 principles of highly successful leaders. And it's these 12 principles that are game changers. Oh, sorry, we're going to get to that. These 12 principles are game changers. It's not only the principle. It's the tools and processes within the principles. Now, let me have you uh, raise your hand if you want to do this. Who wants to be successful? Raise your hand. Who wants to make a lot of money? I see a few hands not up, so you don't want to make much money. <laughs> I'm just joking. Who wants to have a great marriage? Don't we all? Hopefully all our hands are up. My assumption is we have the desire. These principles are the pathway to have and accomplish that. You become masters of these principles and the tools and processes, that is the springboard to make that happen. Now today, obviously, in the amount of time we have, we couldn't even scratch the surface. If you were to sit through a full-day seminar with us, or a three-day leadership retreat, you would go through each one of these, practicing the tools and the processes and how they apply to you and your life right now. Obviously, we don't have the time today. So what I've done is chosen from amongst those 12 just simple things that we can do right now, four of them, four secrets of success. And we're just going to briefly cover those right now. But before we do, it's been shown that the more we laugh, the more we have fun, the more likely we are to remember something. So we have something that we call fun time. And here's how it's going to work. I'm going to ask you what time it is, and you're going to say, fun time. So let's try this, but you've got to say it with some gusto. What time is it? Fun time. All right. Let's see. If, are there any dads in the room? Any dads? Let's see if this was you, or is you. And this is my favorite part, is the look on her face. She's like, what's the big deal here? It's just a diaper. I will admit, I was a dry heaver with my four kids. All right, so what are the secrets of success that I want to share with you in the hopes that it will help you? The first is to develop a personal vision. Now, highly successful leaders lead with a vision. When I say a vision, what words come to your mind? Think about this. Maybe a mission statement? 
a motto, a purpose. Here's what a vision is not. A vision is not a goal. The goal comes later to support the vision. Imagine this, a ship's leaving its port. Where's it going? What if it doesn't have a rudder? The vision is the rudder. In the fighter pilot world, what if I took off with no destination? Who knows? The destination is the vision. I could have a great plan. Hey, I'm going to go up to 30,000 feet, 500 knots. I'm going to fly in route formation. But where am I going? That's the vision for us. Now, when we were in Rwanda, he mentioned that we were there not long ago. We had the chance to meet with their president. If I can move that slide forward. There we go. President Kagame. Anyone familiar with the genocide in Rwanda 20 years ago? 1.1 million people killed in 100 days by friends and neighbors with machetes. Could you imagine? He's the general that led them out of that revolution. And what's interesting is right now, they are a unified country because of President Kagame's vision. His vision is Rwanda 2020, to be a middle-income country by 2020 that's on the national stage. What's amazing is to look at the people and talk with them. They're all Rwandans now. They're not Tutsis and Hutus anymore. Why? Because of one person's vision. We did a full day seminar with a billion dollar shipping company. Think large boats, ships. When we were done, the CEO said, my number one takeaway, I want to make sure the vision is clear within my company. Because I don't think it is. Now, just to illustrate this point, I want you all to stick out your arm and point. Stick out your arm. Now close your eyes. And I want you to move your arm and point to where you think True North is. All hands out there. There you go. All right, now open your eyes. Keep your arms up. Keep your arms up. Eyes open. Now look around the room. What do you see amongst the different hands? He's pointing this way. A large group's pointing that way. True North is this way, at least according to the iPhone. <laughs> If you were to walk into a lot of businesses around the world right now and walk up to a team and ask those separate team members, what's your vision? In other words, what's the most important focus of your team right now? This is what you would probably see. You'd get all kinds of different answers. What's missing? A leader who gives them a clear vision. If I was to tell you beforehand, this is true north, and then have you point, which way would you point? Everyone, 100% would be going the same direction. It's the power of a vision. Now, we're not going to talk about a company or corporate vision here. Let's get personal. Do you remember Arthur Borman? What do you think it started with? Maybe desire? And then can't you imagine him on the couch saying, well, what do I want to do then? How about I want to run on the beach with my family? Is that a compelling vision? Absolutely. Enough to lose 140 pounds in 10 months? That's where it started. Now, each of you have a piece of paper. I gave you that paper, or you should have gotten one walking in. It has on it three questions. Here is my invitation to you, and that is to go home tonight, not tomorrow. Why not tomorrow? It's gone tomorrow, right? Go home tonight and come up with a personal vision. Now, it's not about who's right, it's what's right. Raise your hand if you have a personal written vision right now. OK, about four or five people. Excellent. So this will be worth your time, I hope. Here's the first question that you would answer tonight. Just think about this as I ask you right now. Where would you like to be in one, five, and 10 years from now? Think about that. This is the rudder on your ship. This is your destination. Second question, think of a mentor or a person who's had a significant influence for good in your life. What were the traits and characteristics that stood out to you about that person? Think about that. Sorry, let me go back one. Third question, in 50 years from right now, how do you hope others will look back and describe you? So you're 70, 80 years old. How would they, what's your name? Jesse? How would they describe Jesse? Well, he was kind, he was compassionate, he gave of his time, he left a legacy, wonderful dad. I'm certainly hopeful they don't say, well, he was a jerk. <laughs> That's not what we want, right? Now here's the deal, when you do this tonight, I'm inviting you to take two minutes per question. These are simply to get the thoughts flowing, the ideas going in your mind. And once you're done, go back and reflect on your answers. And this will be the seeds of your vision. Once you have this, then I invite you to write your personal vision. 
and use I am statements. In other words, current tense statements. Why? We don't want to use I hope to someday because we're creating the mental reality prior to the physical reality, right? So please use current tense statement. Here's an example of my vision. Totally transparent here. This is my vision right now that sits next to my computer. Look at the second paragraph here. I am financially independent and I'm leaving the world a better place. Now when I set goals for 2015 in about two weeks, uh, which is a whole separate topic, what are my goals going to revolve around? My vision, right? This is my destination. This is who I want to become. Financially independent is the start. But more than that, what can I do to leave the world a better place? This guides my goals and everything that I do. That's leading with a vision. Now, for anyone who doesn't think this may work for you, let me share a personal story. I spoke to a high school of 1,500 students. After I was done, the next day, a mother called me. And she asked if I wouldn't mind coaching her son. Now, typically, I don't do that. It's not what we typically do. But I asked her to share with me the story of her son. And this is what she told me in her words. And I'm going to call him John. His real name's not John. He's from this city, so some of you might know this uh, young man. 15 years old. He's a counselor at a Boy Scout camp. One of his best friends, another counselor, uh, some freak storm was suddenly struck by lightning and killed instantly. So his dad decided to go pick him up from the scout camp. Obviously, he was distraught. His dad drove up, picked him up. Now remember, he's 15 years old, so he has his learner's permit. His dad decides to let him drive home, and he's sitting in the passenger seat talking with John. They're driving down the mountain, dirt road. John gets a little too close to the edge, and a loose pot spot of gravel grabs the left tire and pulls the truck off the edge. The truck rolls 100 yards. When the truck stops rolling, John looks over, and there is his dad in his seat next to him, dead. Put yourself in John's shoes. How would you recover from that? Could you imagine your best friend and father within 24 hours? I'll tell you what my response to this lady was, absolutely, bring your son over to our office. We would love to talk with him. Now, we're not a psychologist by any stretch, but we started to share with him some success principles. And then we did this exact activity that I just invited you to do. He came up with answers to those three questions. And then I invited him to write his personal vision. I gave him 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, he started writing and came up with a great vision. I asked if he wouldn't mind sharing it. Now, keep in mind, his mom is sitting right next to him. These were some of the words from his vision. I'm going to make a difference in this world. I can overcome challenges when they come my way. I am a man. Now, I looked over at his mom and tears were streaming down her cheeks as she listened to her son talk about his vision. So, if a 15-year-old boy can do it, anybody can do it. Now, does that mean he's going to be free from challenge? No, they're going to continue to come his way. But now he has a destination for who he is and where he's going in life. And I credit John for at least taking ownership of that and doing it. So that's my first invitation. Add a rudder to our lives with a personal vision. Second, and third, invitations, fall within this principle of apply the power of knowledge. Don't you love the word apply? Because you can only apply something once you have it, right? If we don't have the knowledge, how do we apply it? Now, I'm going to do a little demonstration to uh, illustrate this point. Where's Katie at? Come on up here, Katie. I asked her if we could do this beforehand. Who would like to learn how to escape from duct tape in less than two seconds? This could save your life. Anybody know how to do this already? couple of you? Anyone who watched Shark Tank? <laughs> so my good friend who was on Shark Tank, his name is Jason Hansen, former CIA agent. He runs a spy escape and evasion course. We were on the Today Show together. He's a great guy. He's the one that showed us how to do this. So here's the deal. I want you all to stand up. You're going to do it with me, and then I'm going to show Katie how to do this. Just beforehand, I walked backstage with her, and I took some duct tape, and the dean asked, what are you guys doing? <laughs> all right, so here's the deal. Let's say you're getting kidnapped. What's the number one way that someone will subdue you if you've already tried to fight back? This is before zip ties. Zip ties are number two. Duct tape is number one. Why? It's quick, it's simple, right? And most people don't know how to escape. They don't have the knowledge. So if you are already tried to defend yourself, you're past that point, they've subdued you. And now that you're going to get duct taped, this is what you do. Try and put your arms together so everyone put your elbows together. So 
you don't want to go like this when he's duct taping you. Try and put your elbows together. And then you're going to put your hands over your head when you want to escape, whenever you have that moment. Put your hands over your head and in one motion, you come down like that. So everyone put your hands over your head and in one motion come down. But you got to do it like you mean it. <laughs> Not that little Sally, you know, like, really, like you mean it. Do it again. Hands over your head and boom, down. Like you mean it. There you go. So let's do this, Katie. I'm going to duct tape you hands out like we talked about. Now, why do they use duct tape? One, because I can pull her around fairly easily, right? I had my brother, who's a fighter pilot as well. As soon as I learned this trick, by the way, I went home and showed it to all my daughters. Hey, girls, you're going to learn this. <laughs> and this is what I did. I lined my fighter pilot brother up next to my seven-year-old daughter. I said, all right, now both of you escape. My brother's going like this. Oh! And my daughter goes, whoosh. <laughs> I said, what's wrong, Stephen? Come on. So go ahead and escape. Let's see it. I might make a fool of myself. Oh, come on. <laughs> Do it. There you go. All right, round of applause. <laughs> High five. Good job, Katie. All right. Have a seat. So what's the difference? Two minutes ago, we didn't have the knowledge, right? Now we have the knowledge. Now we can apply it. How many applications does this have in life? How about in a marriage relationship? How about trying to run a school? How about trying to run a business? How about if someone files a lawsuit against you? How do you get the knowledge so that you can apply it and be successful? I'm going to give you two very specific invitations right now. The first is to read a book a month. Now, I'm not talking about Harry Potter. <laughs> That's a good book. I'm talking about a book that teaches you a skill. Maybe it's a parenting book. Maybe it's a leadership book. If you're a new manager, probably a good book to read. Who's in sales again? Raise your hand. How about a book a month on how to increase sales? There was a large conference. There was another speaker who made the same invitation. It was a group of sales reps. He said, I challenge you that if you do this, you'll double your sales each year. Well, one person we know of took him up on this challenge. Sure enough, that year his sales doubled. The next year, the sales doubled again. And they continued into the third year until about halfway through the third year, and then the sales started decreasing. He couldn't figure out what was going on. And so into the fourth year, he was stumped. He said, what do I do? He went back and found his mentor. And as they started to examine his life, what do you think they found? That's right. Halfway through the third year, he stopped reading a book a month. Could it be that simple? Maybe. He started reading again, and what do you think happened to his sales? Right back up. I will tell you, oftentimes it is that simple. The mind is just like a muscle. What happens if we don't ever work out our muscles? They atrophy. Our mind does the same exact thing. How about this for a couple statistics for you? 43% of college graduates will never read another book in their life. Is that astounding? It almost seems unbelievable. 43%, that's half this room, will never pick up another book once you're graduated. How about this? Last year, 80% of households did not purchase or buy a single book in the United States. Leaders are readers. You want to be transformational? Then let's get the knowledge so that we can apply it. Go ahead. Uh, does this include like audio books? Yes, it's a good question. Does this include audio books? Yes and no. It's a great thing to combine them both. I wouldn't do one at the exclusion of the other. There's something powerful about reading the words and imprinting them in your mind. However, what you brought up is a great point. Greatness in, greatness out, right? What do we listen to while we drive in the car? We can certainly put greatness in there. That's a fabulous point. I'm glad you asked that. Thank you. Leaders are readers. That's secret to success number two. Read a book a month. Can anyone do that who has the desire? Absolutely. Anybody can do that. Here's the third secret of success. Invest 3% of your income back into yourself for the rest of your life. We had a group of college graduates. We spoke at the university. Afterwards, one of them asked me, what could you give me that would be the best advice I could get? I don't know. You could answer that a million ways. So I chose to invite her to invest 3% of her income back into herself for the rest of her life. And in all seriousness, she looked at me and said, does that mean I can go get a pedicure? <laughs> No, that's not what we're talking about here. CDs, books, MP3s, investing in a course. For example, does $1,000 sound like a lot to invest in a leadership boot camp? 
Maybe. What if that's where you get your million dollar idea? What if that's where you find your business part to launch off and to be successful? Who knows? You see that little graph? What if I decide to invest $1,000 into a leadership boot camp and it leads to a million dollars for you? That's the place where you got your seed, your idea. Now here's one for you. I've never bought a book in my life, but I've invested in many books. <laughs> now is that a play on words? Of course it is, but it's a mindset. See, what do we do with expenses? Do we grow expenses or try to minimize them? Yeah, minimize them. So if I view $1,000 seminars as an expense, oh, I'm not going to pay $1,000. Or if I view $100 worth of books as, oh, I'm not going to pay another $100. That's the wrong mindset. That's an expense. What do we do with investments? We like to grow them, right? More money in because we know the return is going to be great. If I view it as an investment, I'm much more willing to do that because I see the return. We go to two seminars a year as part of this invest 3% into our self rule. I can't tell you how much we've learned, how many partners we've met by doing that. It is one of the habits of success and very few people do it. It is a game changer. Now just to illustrate that point, who is this? Michael Jordan getting a hug from who? Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson showed up at the Lakers and what was one of the first things he invited the team to do? Well, not invited, he told them. <laughs> You're going to start reading a book a month. And then they're going to share lessons learned when they were done. See, he knew that success was part mental and the other part was physical. But one without the other was not going to lead to a championship. Sure enough, five championships later, one of the most successful coaches in NBA history. Reading a book a month was one of the keys to success for his teams. Anybody ever eat at a Famous Dave barbecue? I had a chance to meet with Famous Dave. $500 million in revenue, 170 stores. Here's what Famous Dave said. The size of your library will be the size of your wallet. He's been investing in himself since he was 20 years old. He said, I've attended every seminar out there. Every part of my success is due to something that I picked up along the way. So here's one example. He says, by the way, I read 30 magazines a month. Not cover to cover, but I skim through looking for sound bites. Other people will get on the radio, and they'll say, hey, come eat our great barbecue. Not Famous Dave. <coughs> Famous Dave will get on the radio, and he'll say, my barbecue is so awesome, it's like Elvis has come back to life and is dancing on your tongue. Now, which one would you go try? That didn't just happen. He found that soundbite in a magazine. He puts in the effort, and he gets the reward. Two quotes. I don't want to skip by those, sorry. Our good friend James Malinchek, who was on ABC's Secret Millionaire, said, don't go through life being a know-it-all, go through life being what? A learn-it-all. Big difference in mindset, right? And how about this? This is, a, this is one you have to think about for a second. It's not what you don't know. It's what you don't know that you don't know that holds you back. Isn't that true? Sometimes we simply don't know what we don't know. So, there we go. There's three secrets of success. We're on to the fourth and final one. And that is to never give up. Now, how many people in here have ever been tested to the limits with a challenge or some sort of adversity that you felt really you were on the brink? Raise your hand if you've ever been there. For those of us that don't have our hands up, I got news, it's coming. <laughs> it may not be pretty, but it's going to happen to all of us, right? It doesn't mean we don't make course corrections, but it means that we're smart, that we get up when we fall down. Did you know the average person has been told no or what they cannot do 148,000 times by the time they're 18 years old. Maybe that's why, on average, 70% of our thoughts as adults tend to be negative. Think about this. How many times do you drive around and think, uh, I can't do this. It's not for me. I know other people can, but uh, just not good enough. Have you ever been there? We've all been there, haven't we? Those are self-defeating negative thoughts. Average child laughs 150 times a day. Average 30-year-old, 15 times a day. What happens that beats us down, that takes that out of us? We cannot give up when challenges hit. Now here's an example of that negative programming that the world would give us. I'm going to ask you a question. I want everyone to shout out the first word that comes to your mind. You ready? What is the opposite of success? Failure. Failure. That's exactly how we've been programmed. Is that true? Yeah. No. Why not? 
Yes, you learn from your failures. Failures are a rung on the ladder to success, right? But why is this negative programming? If we're afraid to fail, what might we be afraid to do in the first place? Try. How many of us have been afraid to try something? Because we might fail. Oh, I don't want to fail, so I'm not going to try. We've probably all been there. That is negative programming that will hold us back from accomplishing our dreams. Why? Someone along the way has probably beaten us down mentally to say we can't do that. We've got to get rid of that negative programming that the world has given us. The real opposite of success is giving up. <coughs> On average, using finances as an example. Oops, I'm sorry. We'll get to that in just a second. On average, people who have been very successful financially have had four major setbacks. However, when they press through those, they've had seven major successes. What's the lesson learned? They got back up. Now, who's ever heard of Derek Redmond? Sorry, that little clicker keeps going by there. Who's ever heard of Derek Redmond? Anybody? He was a 1992 Olympic runner who ran the 400 meters. Now, I want you to watch this video. What you're going to see in Derek is halfway around this track, he falls down and tears his hamstring. Now he has a choice. Stay down or get back up. Let's see what Derek does. powerful video. Does that kind of just touch you? For me, it did. Why? Because Derek fell down and he got up not to win. Why? To finish his race. 
We are all going to get knocked down in this room. It's going to happen. Maybe it's the sudden death of a loved one. Because all you have to do is flip on KSL to see that it happens every day. Maybe it's a financial setback. Maybe your home burns down. They come in all shapes and varieties. But when they happen, will you get back up and finish your race? There is always hope. I don't care how bad it gets, there's hope. It's sad when things happen where people take their lives and end it shortly. It's happened twice in the last two days in this state. There's always hope for us. And here's the real key takeaway. I hope that we're not afraid to try, simply because of a fear of failure. Go out and try things. If you fail, great, you're one step closer to success, right? So these were just four quick things that we can do right now. What were they? Develop your personal vision. What's number two? Read a book a month. Greatness in, greatness out, right? What's number three? Invest 3% of your income back into yourself. And number four, never give up. Make smart course corrections, but never give up. Now, who feels like they, raise your hand if you feel like you have an idea that you can go use, a thought that came to you, something that you can use in your life. Raise your hand if this has been worth your time. Good, that was the hope. The hope is that, you know what, we're all in this together. We've all had experiences where we were successful. We've all had experiences where we were failures. How can we go out in this world and make a difference? Leaving UVU, what can we do to cause a ripple effect throughout the entire world? Because it is possible. Now, as we get ready to wrap up, people often ask us, you know, what can I do? What more can I do to get more of this? Because it really resonates with a lot of us. So let me give you three things that you can do right now. The first is to go to becomingyourbest.com. If you put in your first name and email, you'll see two boxes. We will send you a success formula for free that I haven't even talked about today. Along with that, every week you'll get one email that has a tool that you can use right now in your life. Now, we attended a seminar last week in Atlanta, investing 3% into ourselves, one of our two each year. The speaker said something very interesting. He said, look at the person in front of you. Now, there was, there was people in front of us and to the side of us. Look at the person in front of you. Look at the person behind you. Look to your left and look to your right. Out of those four people, one will take action. The rest will do nothing and they'll go on with their lives. Statistically, he's exactly right. The Pareto Principle, the 80-20 rule, statistically he's right. I think at UVU we have a lot more action takers than one in four. This is easy. Anyone can do it. It's free. We're offering it as something to try and say, here's an over-delivery. Here's as much as we can give you to go out and succeed. And we're using this, by the way, ourselves, in our company, in my personal life, and with my family. So it's a free success formula for you. If you want to go even much deeper than that, we have a leadership retreat here in Utah up at the Zermont Resort on May 6th to the 8th. I would not bring this up if I didn't think it could be life-changing. Uh, it's three days focused on you, exclusively. Your business, if you have a business. It's all about you. There will be some very high-profile business leaders from all over the US. There will be student leaders from different universities. It will be an incredible retreat. Uh, just a couple of quick comments from people who attended recently. One lady said, you know what, I've struggled with depression my whole life. After this retreat, for the first time ever, I have a clear path forward. I know how to overcome this. Now, do you think that affected her business life? Do you think that affected her family? Absolutely. Another person who was a successful businessman. These were his words in a note he wrote us. He said, thank you for saving my family, thank you for saving me, and thank you for saving my business. You salvaged a sinking ship. We had no idea what was going on in his life. But that's the power when you apply the tools, the processes, and the principles. So real quick here, who is this for? If you're a person that wants to apply these principles to be successful in your life, if you raised your hand earlier, then this would be helpful. If you're a person that wants to develop a specific plan of who will do what and when will you do it, and then have a team and coach to help you be accountable, this is for you. That's what you're gonna walk away with, is a very specific, actionable plan. And if you want to network with some very high-profile, successful individuals and allow them to help you gain the right knowledge, this is for you. Here's who it's not for. If you feel like you've got all the right tools to succeed right now and you're good to go, it's not for you. <laughs> and that's not the person we want there because we're all trying to grow together and learn. And when we say becoming your best, that's what we're all trying to do together. So I wouldn't offer that to you if I didn't think it could be very helpful. Now we know, uh, the dean, as he mentioned earlier, we've had the chance to work together. Normally, if you go to our website, this would be $1,200 a person right now. Uh, if 
you want to come. If you're interested in this, come and talk with me afterwards and we'll take $200 off. Plus we'll allow you to bring a partner or a friend so it'll only be $500 for each of you, which is a huge uh, offering. So if that's something that's of interest to you, please come find me afterwards. Once we leave, then you can still certainly register on the website. And the last thing that you can do, if you want more, is we brought 20 copies of the book with us. Coleman, raise your hand. <coughs> Coleman's back there. Uh, we have some personalized copies. You can take one right now. Normally, I think they're $25, uh, but if you just pay, I think it's $20, then you can walk away with one right now. First 20 people uh, that get one can have that. And that's all we brought with us. Now, as we get ready to wrap up here in the next two minutes, let me finish with these two quotes. Gandhi said, speed is irrelevant if what? You're going in the wrong direction. These principles are about helping us go in the right direction, developing a vision, and gaining the right knowledge. Think about Arthur Borman. He had the desire, right? Then he had a vision. And then what did he do? He took action. And that's what I hope we'll do today. Now, at Becoming Your Best, as we wrap up, there's one person in this room who's put a lot of effort into helping you succeed. And that is your dean, Dean Norm Wright. We've had the chance to work with him, like he said, in a few different meetings. I've seen how much he thinks about you firsthand. I know that he stays awake at night thinking about your success and how to help you succeed. And oftentimes, that goes unrecognized. So as we wrap up today, I wish you the greatest success. And what I'd ask you to do is stand up and give your dean a round of applause and thank him for all of his efforts. So let's all stand up and thank him. And thank you so much. It's been great being with you. Have a great day.